Imagine watching four of your friends sucked into an underwater oil pipeline, pitch black darkness, clawing and tugging at the pipe with chipped off fingernails and bleeding fingers, hopelessly waiting for someone to rescue you from an underwater nightmare without any escape. All the oxygen running out while you wait for death to come and claim you, and the unbearable burning sensation that keeps growing in your chest because of the oily sludge all around you. Christopher Bodrum reached the end of a 30-inch diameter pipeline after tugging, shoving, dragging, and crawling through it with an injured arm, but almost gave up after witnessing the Angel of Death. He was traumatized and exhausted. His muscles were damaged and his eyes were burning from being inside the oil and water-filled pipeline. But what he mistook for death turned out to be a lifeline in the form of his dive mentor, Ronald Ramitar. Ramitar enlisted the assistance of Corey Crawford to free Bodrum from the deadly line of Pariah Fuel Training Company's offshore facility. This tragedy took the lives of his colleagues Faisal Kurban, Yusuf Henry, Kazim Ali Jr., and Rishi Nagasar. Wait till the end of the video to see more uncut footage of this horrible tragedy from one of the men's GoPro. You must be wondering, how did these men end up in this nightmare in the first place? Let's tell you the story of this horror and the words of the survivor who endured it. On February 25th, 2022, these Pariah Fuel Trading Company LTD employees were replacing a damaged piece of Pariah Fuel Sea Line 36's riser off the port of Point Pierre, a town in Trinidad and Tobago, when the fatal tragedy occurred. A differential pressure, or Delta P incident, occurred just after noon on that day when the divers removed an inflatable plug generating a vortex that sucked the men down that pipeline. Bodrum recalled arriving at work early for a toolbox meeting about the work ahead on the riser. He said they discussed the job, its stages and its hazards, but Delta P was never mentioned. He remembered being in the habitat with Kerbin, Henry, and Nagasar, while Ali Jr. was on a barge nearby. After removing a blank flange, Kerbin directed Bodrum to check to see if another team had completed carber testing the line. The carber weld test tool fits inside the pipe and creates two seals on either side of the weld. However, he claimed that the pipe was deformed and that the seals would not fit. Bodrum stated that he and the others ate lunch as Pariah and LMC addressed the situation. Following lunch, Ali Jr. advised the group that they could proceed without the test. As they were deflating the inflatable plug, Ali Jr. entered with the spanner, and Bodrum noticed water rising in the chamber. Alia, what's going on? Look, this thing is filling up. Let me get out of here, urged Bodrum to his companions. He remembered being caught in a tornado-like storm of gushing water, striking the pipeline walls, feeling debris, and holding his breath until his lungs hurt. I was prepared for heaven, Bodrum said. Bodrum stated that he was suddenly no longer in the water. He did, however, admit to not knowing whether he was alive or dead, or if he was in paradise or hell. At that point, I told myself that I would die. I said to God, I am coming. Ma, look out for me. I was expecting to be dead, he said. He claimed he heard Ali Jr. call out to him and mistook his teammates for being outside the pipe. He soon discovered, however, that the entire team was there. He crawled backward to Ali Jr. and the others in pitch black darkness, not knowing where he was. He stated that Kerbin was in pain and Henry had a broken leg. Bodrum had suffered an injury to his left arm. Henry informed the others that he had crawled over Nagasar a little further down the pipe. We going in dead, Bodrum said, was the cry of despair from Ali Jr. But Bodrum tried to push them to keep going ahead to get out of the line. Bodrum first stated that he was unclear about which direction to take. He claimed that it was his co-workers that put him on the right path and saved his life. He claimed the men stayed together and dragged themselves over the horizontal unit of the pipeline that ran along the seafloor. Mind you all, in here was like an unbelievable nightmare. Your eyes are burning every time. You try to open your eyes, it burns. 
It's pitch black. You can't see anything, your throat's burning, your ears are ringing, and your body is sore, Bodrum said. Inside, there was not just a crawl through a pipe, like how plenty of people might be thinking. As they dragged the pipe with 8 to 10 inches of water, Bodrum discovered Ali's GoPro camera and considered leaving a last message for his family, but decided against it. Instead, they prayed for rescue. But when the guys got closer to the vertical line, the water level rose, so Bodrum scouted ahead, leaving the others behind. From Bodrum, Small Kaz, Ali Jr., was holding me. I said, I'm not coming out the pipe without you all. I would never leave you all. However, Bodrum quickly grasped the enormity of the situation. He walked about 15 feet and discovered a diving tank. He understood then that he needed to get to the surface and help the others. He was certain that other divers were already exploring the pipe. He claimed that he made his way through flooded sections of the pipeline, discovering two more scuba tanks before reaching the habitat's entrance. Kerbin attempted, but failed, to follow. Bodrum floated into the pipe, grabbing onto a chain overhead but was unable to pull himself out. He screamed his lungs off, bawled and cried for help as he knocked the pipeline with the chain. He then heard a knock. Ramitar entered the chamber after a series of back and forth knocks, according to Bodrum. I started seeing a little light in the habitat. I swear to God, it was the angel of death coming for me. I told myself that this was the light that people talk about. Ramitar was unable to contact Bodrum and requested assistance, but Crawford quickly entered the room. Bodrum informed them that the remaining divers were in the pipeline, and the guy stated that they were waiting to get more equipment and backup. Bodrum recalls pleading with many people to save the divers before being taken to the San Fernando General Hospital by ambulance. He was critical of his treatment, claiming that neither LMCS nor Pariah thought he could get decompression sickness. He also claimed that the hospital was unprepared for his situation, as he spent three of his six days there with oil on his body. He also said that he was placed in the same room as a COVID-19 patient who died later on. Ali, Henry, and Kerbin's bodies were found on February 28th, and Nagasar on March 2nd. Post-mortem examination by Professor Hubert Daisley indicated that Ali could have been alive until midnight on February 26th. Kerbin, 6 p.m. Henry until early hours, and Nagasar until midnight on February 27th. It's nearly impossible to live life unfazed once you've seen death from up close and watched your companions die. Bodrum still cannot go to the beach with his daughter and cannot sleep because the nights are plagued with horrifying dreams of his comrades' agonizing screams.